Okay, let me start with the voice and touch control, the checklist that are uh, something uh, pretty unique in our uh, experience because usually checklists uh, that are mnemonics, that are uh, cognitive uh, helps for uh, medical doctors, nurses, paramedic, are something that are attached to a trolley or are within a pocket or more than one pocket. And people usually are expected to read, read something on paper. And reading paper sometimes is challenging because if you think medical simulation or better, if you think the real medical and surgical life, people many times are in need very urgently, very quickly to perform actions, to save life, to do something very useful and usually very complicated, challenging, difficult in order to have aligned the entire team. So, Try to figure out what usually happens within a surgical room, within indoor or outdoor medical theaters, like the one I'm displaying nearby our title, Voice and Touch Control Checklist. In this case, is a checklist called the name, claim name, designed in Boston by the Harvard Center for Medical Simulation. And uh, if you figure out uh, those type of uh, really challenging situations, we can go step by step together in order to have a better understanding about uh, why and how to use a checklist and uh, visual mnemonics in a totally innovative way, not uh, printed on paper, not within uh, people's uh, pockets, but displayed on uh, walls or on big videos. Let me go further just to show the other names because uh, the team, the team that is uh, experimenting in Boston, Massachusetts, the visual uh, checklist is uh, made by Roxanne Garner, by Rebecca Meinhardt by Barbara Bertani and by myself, Fernando. So we are four plus some other guys that provide their help to allow us to experiment. I'm talking on behalf of all and I'm sharing some other images. Then I'm expected to share with you a short video, three and a half minutes about what we are doing. In this case, we are within a simulated hospital room. It's simulated even if it seems to be a real room because it is from a virtual hospital, a place where the job is performed by simulation. So it's not a real medical or surgical place. We attached to the ceiling a couple of ultra projectors. They are part of the irreal setting. I was talking about irreal two days ago. And we are projecting in an interactive manner two walls, matter one wall and a half, because the other part of the second wall is already occupied by medical tools and devices. Here is a, a patient simulator. It's plastic, it's purely plastic. Couple of projected walls. We can look at the main wall. On the main wall, there are writings. There are highlights by virtual pens. There are options to take, again, electronically because we are facing, or better, our learners are facing a very complex situation. 
as per the usual uh, in medical simulation. So they are usually facing uh, a patient simulator, a mannequin, that is about to die. And they have to try to save the patient uh, in two, three, four minutes. On average, the, the time uh, is really a short time frame. And uh, medical students or medical professional people, as well as nurses or nursing students and paramedic or paramedical students are in need to cooperate to figure out what is really happening inside the plastic body, inside the mannequin, and try to find very quickly an effective solution. So they have to share a diagnosis. And it's challenging. It's challenging because knowledge varies between uh, and among the people because uh, the level of uh, performance may vary a lot. There are people very able to perform, let's say, basic life, uh, life uh, operations on the dummies and other people uh, that they are not. So the team has to divide the work among the most experienced and the less experienced team members. And they have to share and to try to remain on the same page, to share the basic knowledge and the advanced knowledge about what is happening. Mainly with undergraduate students, it's not so easy. It's really challenging. This is a wall for undergraduate students. This is a wall in order to allow undergraduate students to try to figure out if what is happening is a myocardial infarction or something related to arterial fibrillation. Uh, seems for sure to be something related to the heart, some heart conditions, but they do not know. They have to look at the wall, they have to understand which mnemonic could be relevant in order to start intervening on the medical patient, the simulated patient, the dummy, however, as we have used to say, the plastic. And this is from the user experience point of view. From the instructional designer point of view, what is happening, or better, what happened before uh, starting the simulation, some weeks or months in advance, was uh, trying to decide which information were uh, and are very relevant to be shared and shown, which information uh, have to mislead people toward something that is uh, the wrong path because we have usually to balance the level of complexity. So according to the level of the engaged learners, we have to decide how many true info we have to provide and how many false info we have to provide. So we have to suggest the wrong drugs, we have to suggest the wrong medical maneuvers, at the same time, we have to suggest on the same wall the right medical maneuvers and the right drugs. Then uh, people uh, ongoing the simulation have to take their own decisions, have to balance quantities, timing, level of intervention, and so on the technical side of the medical nursing performance. At the same time, they have to perform organizational behavior in a very effective way. Performing an effective organizational behavior means being able to share knowledge as a team, means under time pressure, being able to 
bring all within the same page, so within sharing the same diagnosis, uh, uh, remaining the same, within the same diagnostical page, and performing according to the diagnosis the right medical procedures. Checklists and mnemonics are uh, part of the scene, in my opinion, are really the core of the scene, more than the patient simulator, from uh, an instructional uh, design perspective, because people uh, have, have to learn sometimes in real time, ongoing, the critical situation, what they have to do. Because medicine is a highly complicated science, and uh, not all the needed knowledge may be available within uh, the, let's say, the brain or the operating memory of people. So part of the knowledge has to be figured out from checklist, checklist and mnemonics. This is why we are uh, allowing people to work within a simulated medical environment learning how to very effectively use checklist and mnemonics in real time without being in need to have someone reading a handbook, usually attached to a trolley. Usually this is the trolley where people find attached a handbook with the checklist. In our case, people directly may look at the same checklist altogether, not only a pair of eyes, as usually happens right now within the real medical simulation settings or the real medical practice settings, because all is displayed on a big wall or at least a big surface. Those are existing checklist. It's pretty impossible reading or looking at them. Those are uh, very famous checklists in the US because they are from uh, Stanford Medical School. They are uh, highly appreciated. They are very good if you have a printed checklist, if you can open a handbook. But projecting those type of checklist is pretty impossible reading them. Those are different checklists designed by us, with us, uh, I mean the professional and experts from the Abba Center for Medical Simulation, as well as uh, the team from LogosNet and Centro Studio Logos, and a couple of professors from the Polytechnic School of Milano, in order to allow a better comprehension, a better reading, a better understanding. Uh, once they are displayed on the walls. Different uh, experiment, because they, we are experimenting different uh, layouts. So same checklist, different layout. And this is the real challenge. Communication partners, knowledge visualization strategies, as you can figure out from the uh, checklist I was uh, sharing before with you, it's not easy having something like uh, visual communication really working, working well. In our experiments, we are uh, developing more than 12 different layouts and maybe one or two are really working, maybe because uh, we are using simulation in order to check if something that we are designing is working. For instance, this is working. This is a checklist designed by the Hava Center for Medical Simulation called the name Remain. I was talking about uh, it at the very beginning of my talk today. And now is also embedded within the Massachusetts General Hospital Handbook of Medical Emergencies is uh, technically a checklist plus a mnemonic. 
The mnemonic is a split in three, name, claim, aim, with a very short description about how to do, how to perform as a team when the team is facing a situation. And strictly technically speaking, this is the checklist. A list of items, flaggable. Also on our wall is flaggable in order to keep all the team within the same page, in order to be sure all the team is visually aligned. They know where they are. And this is the wall, purely the brick and mortar wall. At this point, uh, if possible, I'm asking David to start the short video so you can figure out uh, something better about uh, what is the meaning of the visual checklist. Uriel, open checklist one. Uriel, open checklist one. Uriel, zoom one. Uriel, zoom immediate. Uriel, zoom diagnose. Uriel, open one. Uriel open two. Uriel open three. Uriel go to new motorax event. Uriel zoom out. Uriel zoom three. Uriel open tree. Wait, wait, wait. Uriel zoom in. Uriel next. Uriel next. Uriel previous. Uriel previous. Uriel, zoom out. Uriel, uh, open five. Uriel, zoom out. And so on. Uriel, uh, zoom two. Uriel, zoom out. I think it's enough. We had the time to, to share a lot of uh, different visualizations. Thank you. So in this way, we are sharing what we have used to do with a medical checklist. Is knowledge, is knowledge visualization and is uh, knowledge interaction vocal and visual interaction with a piece of knowledge that are very relevant and that we are making available in a different and innovative way both within the traditional medical simulation setting and also within very innovative surgical settings because the surgery is a real need of this type of visualization Thank you for uh, your attention and I'm uh, here available if uh, there are uh, questions. Thank you so much, Alessia. Great, great, great to see what you're doing and I always enjoy it. It's good to have you here. Um, we have a question from the chat. Uh, Elizabeth wants to know, um, do the medical students also use medical dummies in any of the learning? She's seen some immersive environments that have um, Simulations with uh, with heart operations. So, are there are there medical are there dummies as part of the simulations? Uh, usually, yes. Dummies uh, or patient simulators are part of the scenario. For students, are the main part of the scenario. 
for us as instructional designer, knowledge is the main part of the scenario and knowledge is split in between the dummies and the working environment. With a working environment, I mean also the walls with the projected checklist. But for sure, the dummies are part of the scenario. Okay, so they're spending some time with the dummies, with the, the mannequins, whatever, and then some on, on the walls. Let, let me ask a different kind of question. So that the checklists were, were really cool and they worked, you know, really, really nicely. You could, you know, as you saw with, with voice activation and touch, as, as you had mentioned. Um, do you see a role for those checklists in the in a real environment? In other words, not an e-real environment, but in an actual environment. Would there be a, a version of that that would work in, you know, during an actual operation that would work seamlessly? Uh, Is that something you envision down the line? A cardiac surgeon from uh, the veteran hospital in Boston is uh, already experimenting visual visual checklist on a wall within a surgical environment for two main reasons. The first is knowledge, knowledge uh, distribution among all the team members. The second reason is that uh, cardiac surgery many times means a lot of hours within uh, the surgical uh, theater and a part of the team that is changing, ongoing the operation, ongoing the procedures. So visual checklist could be of help in order to share knowledge also about what already happened when someone from the team was not physically attending and part of the operations. So two main reasons. Uh, I'm not uh, a medical expert. I'm only as an educator working with uh, experts in medical education. Uh, their opinion is that the checklist could help in the real world, not only within a simulated setting. Frankly speaking, I do not know. I'm fascinated because it's the first time I'm working with medical checklists. And uh, I assume that uh, they may help because my colleagues are saying this. So, hope so. Okay. Yeah, I hope so too, and I, and I would think so. And if uh, Hal, Hal Christensen is on the chat at the moment, but I know, I mean, I think Hal's uh, thinking would be that, that, that it would indeed help and that that would be the kind of performance support um, that would be very, very useful. I mean, I think particularly because, yeah, I guess, I, you know, hard to understand the setting, but it's, I mean, I know that, you know, not being a surgeon, I've, I've seen, you know, I've seen them on TV. Um, but because it's voice activated, I would think that would help. There might be some some things, but, you know, you're you're fairly busy as a surgeon and, you you know, you can't you can't take out your cell phone in the middle of surgery and go look something up. But if you have some kind of, you know, checklist that's everyone can see and it's on the wall and, and can be voice activated to move it, that sounds like it would really, really be a good fit, um, potentially. Another question from, from Donna. Donna wants to know, um, Will the results be available for review for medical checklists in a real environment? So I guess when when this rolls out, will will we get to find out about it when this rolls out in the in a real environment? Uh, we have for the moment a couple of papers in order to start sharing the first outputs from our simulations. In my opinion, by the end of uh, 2021 we will be able to try to export in a real environment. For the moment, within a real environment, we are only working with the HoloLens, providing a checklist, mnemonics, and some other info on the lenses of the main surgical operator in another project in between Turin and Briançon, Italy and France. We never projected on real walls within a surgical theater, but we are going further with our experiments. And I can assume end of 2021, we will be able to share a robust base of data about all the simulations. We will discuss in January, 2022, during the International Congress of Medical Simulation. And then we will look for someone willing to experiment in the real places. This is at least the, the roadmap. Okay. 
All right. Well, sounds great. So, so Donna, definitely be, be back at ICLW in 2022. Hopefully, we'll come back next year as well. Um, it's like 20, 2021 is going to be when the work is done. Uh, this, is, this, is, this, is a lot, <laughs> this is a lot of fun. Uh, and it should be really interesting to see, I know, how this works in the real world. I would, I would think it would, it would work well in the real world that it's got, um, you know, kind of all the, all the right things to be a kind of just in time performance support that um, can work in the, in that environment. But it's a, it's a fascinating experiment. Um, other questions that people have about, uh, about this, I'll look at the chat. If you have anything else in the chat, we talked about medical students, we talked about um, the future and uh, I think, uh, and Hal, ah, Hal has chimed in with a yes in all capital letters. So Hal very much agrees that uh, performance support is the way to go as he always does. And uh, looking forward to the use of, uh, of these checklists in a real environment as well in a simulated um, environment. So, all right, well, I think we're just about at the time so we can wrap up and I know Fernando, you'll be back to uh, talk about crisis management yeah. in the afternoon. And so we've got more to more to talk about um, with you, and uh, you know that the EREL system yes. is always always just uh, fascinating to talk about, and uh, get a lot of participation. So, all right, well, thanks thanks once again, and we'll see you uh, see you in a couple it's hours. Me. Thanking you. See you. Bye bye. All right. Bye bye.